Josh, I thought you were having an interview with me. Huh? Is it working now? It is working, yeah. so hi. How are you? Good. Good. This is Josh, and we are coming to you live from San Diego at eBrandCon. So, Josh, you're on stage today. Yeah. Tell me, what's what's your speech about? Yeah, so I just finished it this morning. <laughs> uh, I've been busy. Got to rehearse a little bit, uh, but it's it's... Uh, kind of generically about how you can take marketing principles and tactics and, and use them in recruiting and employer branding, but I, I try to take less of a top of funnel view of things and look at it more from the talent experience holistically. So I think too often we look at uh, just just that first point of interaction or that kind of generating awareness with people. Um, but as you know, with any brand that you buy from, it's much more of a life cycle than that, right? So yeah, and, and we treat it, uh, I think employer branding and, and recruitment marketing as a, as soon as they apply, you know, our job's done, we can kind of walk away. Um, but the reality is there's an experience that continues on beyond that. So, so how do we think about that as, as uh, employer brand folks and recruitment marketers and uh, talent acquisition leaders, and then uh, focus on those different touch points and what that looks like and how you can weave marketing into that. So do you start to measure retention in an yeah. organization? Yeah, so we don't yet on our, with our platform, but the, the reality is the companies have tools to do that, right? Mm. Um, but one of the examples I'm going to use in this is my wife actually had an experience with one of her employers. She's in TA. Um, but she applied for an internal position and she never heard anything back and she was a rock star candidate, um, labeled a high potential employee internally. And so she never heard anything and then she got a, a notification that the job was filled um, through an auto trigger with the ATS and she was treated like every other employee, right? So that's the kind of experience that you're getting for your internal employees. Um, and, and you kind of wonder what the experience is like for externals, but if, if you're going to treat anybody well, you should be treating those internals, just like you would a customer, right? As soon as, as, soon as, as soon as somebody buys your product, you're going to treat them better than you're going to treat anybody else, or at least that's the way it should work. Um, so yeah, we don't measure retention, but we what we can do is we can influence the engagement that you um, deliver to those different audiences, um, internals being one, alumni, um, people who have kind of left your company, that doesn't mean you should stop talking to them. Yeah. Um, but I think too often we do. And especially well, if it's a consumer brand, mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, how's that affecting sales and the ongoing? It's my, my last slide, I think uh, I forget what I what I wrote on there, but that uh, I think we try to we try to segment out consumer brand or corporate brand and employer brand, and in my view, at least, they're the same thing. Same thing. So it's I, yeah. I don't know why we try to create this division, and frankly, I think every everybody who's probably here would would uh, agree that it's it's ultimately better if they could get access to corporate branding resources and if corporate branding and corporate marketing. Uh, kind of viewed employer brand at the level of importance that they should. So we're just not quite there yet. I think we need to be. And one more question for you before you go. How important is video to your employer brand? I think it's critical. Um, again, I think, and not just saying that because it's, it's you, but... Uh, <laughs> Sneaky question. I know, right? Yeah. But if you, if you look at the trend just generally in consumer marketing and just how people engage with things, Gen Z, I think they're, the, the channels that they, the, the, their top search engine is YouTube. Um, and we're producing a video now where we interviewed some, some uh, folks from Gen Z talking about their behaviors and how they interact with content and how they learn, and it's all through video. Um, so, you know, I think it's not part of the mix right now. Um, that's a huge miss. For companies that are embracing it, I think it's a huge competitive advantage because they're already there and they're already creating that content. Um, but the other thing too, and it's going to be part of my session today, people try and overcomplicate video. They, they think it has to be this polished, overly produced $5,000, $10,000 video. In reality, in 60 seconds, like you're doing here, you can create a video that's, um, you know, I think in a lot of ways more powerful than those polished corporate videos because it's very authentic and, and real. You're preaching my yeah. pitch. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your Absolutely. time. Yeah, and thank you. thanks for watching. For sure. Bye.